Hi, everyone. Welcome. Today we have Liz McRae with Village Wealth. Liz, welcome. Thanks, Jeff. I really appreciate you having me. Awesome. Well, first of all, I'm really excited because rumor has it today's a big day for you at Village Wealth. Would you care to share with the viewers why that is? Absolutely. So Village Wealth is a buy side platform for individuals and, and organizations who are looking to acquire businesses. And today we made our first public announcement. We held a, a information session this morning for um, advisors from across the country and, and based in Calgary who uh, could see our product kind of live for the first time. And the site is officially open as of today. Awesome. Now I have to ask, because I'm sure people will wonder, um, in these COVID times, I'm looking for the fun stories, the innovation, mm. and I really love the businesses that are launching now. Where did the idea come from for Village Wealth? Really good question. So we kind of call this our COVID baby. We've been in sort of in hibernation for the last nine months. And in the last nine months is really when we turned up the gears on doing this platform and, and, and bringing this project to life. Um, the, uh, the conversation about this concept started in September of last year. And it's sort of um, ironically, like, unfortunately for so many, but fortunately for us, it's a really good time for our product because there's so many businesses that, you know, are now thinking, um, what am I going to do for my succession plan? And is COVID and the pandemic going to now impact my retirement as a business owner. And so there's a lot more business owners who are considering, you know, what are my real options for retirement, as well as the pocket of businesses that are struggling right now. And if they can be sold and if there is opportunity for them to sell rather than wind down, if they're choosing not to go forward with their business, um, it, our, our, our product is very timely for that because we are set up to support um, businesses in finding buyers. And now um, it doesn't exist in the marketplace to the extent that we've built it, that a business owner can find a buyer on our site. And that's really something quite new. And we're very excited and we're very proud to bring this product to market in, in such a needed time. Awesome. And, and I love the innovation that, you know, again, one of the things I find with entrepreneurs is they'll solve their own pain and that becomes a business. Uh, but sometimes it's when they see the bigger pain that becomes a better business. Um, what was the big driving force behind launching now? Like what, what made all the difference to this being the time? Um, well, it's funny because we were always planning to come out this year. We actually thought we'd be out about six months ago. Um, developing a, a technology definitely takes longer than you plan most of the time. Um, and I'm a, I'm a former business broker. And for me, when I worked with business owners, we worked with, with buyers just as much, but the way that we serviced them, I never felt like we were fulfilling our obligation to them. And a lot of, we were constantly getting buyers coming to us saying, this is what I want, or I don't know what I want. How do you help me? And as a business broker, you really only sell the listings and the opportunities that you are representing. You don't take a buyer by the hand and walk them through everything that's on the market. And most businesses don't ever go to market. So we sort of built in a few different strategies for buyers to A, find a home and input their search criteria, help them identify what those search criteria are, understand the process, access expert advice and advisors who can help guide them through the rest of the journey. And then we've built in some search solutions that will actually help them find businesses that they can then review and, and, and consider purchasing. So for me, having been in the business broker space, it was kind of, yeah, you're right. It's, it was a pain point for me. And then as this conversation and this product started to evolve, we really realized, you know, from the business owner perspective, there's so much fear around going to market. And what does it mean to sell my business and find a buyer? And I don't know who these people are. I don't know how to find a buyer. I don't know if they're credible or verified. Um, and, and there's, and they'll, they'll oftentimes just keep running the business as they always have until something happens. 
um, death, divorce, disability, disengagement, the four Ds are, are something that we hear in the industry. And then by that point in time, it's often become more difficult to sell the business and find a compatible buyer. So we wanted to sort of demystify this process for both entities. And by doing that, we created this buyer platform where, um, you know, business owners could sort of release that fear of, are there even buyers out there for me? Because now we have a way and we have a vehicle to show them that and demonstrate, yes, there are, there are buyers and there are qualified and capable people who want your business. Your business is in demand. And we've sort of tried to eliminate some of the barriers for that connectivity to happen. Awesome. And, and I think that's an important thing. I, I know you talk about, you know, in the, in the broker language, you talk about it's the buy side, um, but equally, this is a service for potential sellers because what's the statistic on how many businesses just shut down versus actually find a, 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 a buyer? Is that a big number, a big gap? It is. And so it's it's kind of scary right now where, you know, we're hearing numbers thrown around and 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 guesses and estimates of the number of businesses that will unlike are that are unlikely to survive this pandemic. And I've heard one in seven, I've heard, you know, 25%. I've heard, I've heard a number of, of estimates. Um, but what what is not commonly known is that 70% 70, 70 in 2017, BDC did a study, and there's a number of studies out there throughout North America that came out with similar results. And in 2017, the published report said that 70% of businesses will look to transition within 10 years. And so we're right in the middle of that right now. And the report also stated that 18% of those businesses that do intend to transition will likely, they will wind down and just sell off assets. So that 18% of those, of that population of businesses were already going to wind down. And the other interesting statistic says that 50% of that 70% bracket of business owners, um, because that's the baby bubble, baby boomer generation that, that we're seeing this mass exodus, 50% um, of those businesses plan to sell to an outside party being non-family. So of that 50, if when you step over into the business broker space and the exit planning space, the exit planning Institute um, has, has published studies that show that 70 to 80% of businesses that go to market do not sell. So 70 to 80% of the 50 of the 70 there, they weren't planning to wind down, but at the end of the day, they couldn't end up selling. And so if you stack that on the already 18% of businesses that were going to wind down and you roughly land around 25% of businesses that were already going to wind down around this time before COVID ever happened. So it's some of the numbers that not everybody is looking at. So a lot of the businesses that are facing closures right now they were, they were lined up for retirement. They were going to be closing and they've made the decision uh, to, to not reinvest in their company and continue to go to, to continue to grow and, and pivot and come through this. They've just said, well, we were retiring anyway. And, you know, it's our time. Wow. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a lot of math. And, and just for our mm -hmm. viewers, I'm just going to really simplify it. Um, it it's disturbing. I, I think 1%. <laughs> You know, one percent that doesn't sell is is disturbing. I mean, that's you know, reality is it's a life of hard work that gets shut down. So I, I love that you guys are stacking the odds, and and more importantly, I think I love that you're doing it in this. Um, I, I've called 2020 the year of the pivot. Um, we're going to remember 2020 as the year people innovated. Um, now, my key takeaway is I want to share. You know, you've launched this in a, a you know, Alberta just went into lockdown again. So th this is mm -hmm. definitely, you know, we as a population, we could sit and wring our hands and worry about doom and gloom. But I love the entrepreneurs who just say, you know, now's the time, let's do it. Uh, so what would you say? Now, I usually ask about major milestones. Um, actually, I'm going to ask anyways, because Today is your official launch, so I would suspect mm -hmm. that this is a big milestone. But along the way to becoming launched today, what's the biggest milestone that you're personally the most proud of in your new business? 
That's a good question. I would say seeing it, seeing it work. Um, when like, this has been a conversation that we've been having over the last 15 months and it started to ramp up sort of three months in, we decided we're actually, we're going to put our time and money behind this in Jan, in March, that was January. In March, we solidified our our co-founder team and there are four of us in this. In July, we found our, um, developers. Uh, we have 17 developers on our team and, and they started actually building sort of our design of our concept. And then in August, we incorporated. And then throughout the fall, we've really started, you know, as the developers release their their sprints, as we refer to them as, um, and we can actually see the functionality of the product coming to life. That has been, I've, I've never been part of a tech startup. And it's been really amazing to go, you know, this was a conversation that moved to a PowerPoint that is now functioning and clicking, like the way that someone can actually say, I'm looking for a business in um, Northern Alberta, in mechanical engineering, I have $300,000 to invest, I'm going to, I'm going to buy a business that's between one and 5 million, and they can put that in. And then someone who has a business in that bracket can go and find them and say, I'm looking for a buyer between one and 5 million who has this much cash who can be financed in this industry and they can actually find each other. Like that functionality has been probably the the most amazing milestone for me just because I've never been a part of it before. And to really see like we can make some real powerful change in this space. And, And what's coming next is succession chapters. So succession chapters are a groups of local advisors, and we're going to be providing them a chapter format and process to follow to come together on a monthly basis and have discussions around succession within their own community. And so it will have a networking component and allow them to cross network with other chapters across the country, but also be able to use Village Wealth as a tool within their own community. So for example, if we have buyers starting to sprout up in Grand Prairie or Lethbridge, we will start to work with their community business associations to see if there's interest in building a chapter and then onboard the rest of the advisors within the community and then teach them about how to use Village Wealth within the community to support ownership transition. So it's it's really neat to see what's what's coming next. And so the functionality is only part one of sort of the evolution of what we see this product being able to do. Very, very cool. And, and again, it, it's unique. Um, I have not seen anything like this out there. And it, it, it just, I love that it's not just a platform. It's not just, you know, one thing. It's also really, it's a community, right? Yeah, and that's and and that's been our goal. Um, trying to build a people personal community off a digital platform, as so many people know, it's very difficult to do. And a lot of this process with ownership tra- tra- transition needs to be manually managed. It needs a people, a human touch. We can't fully digitally. Um, solve this succession ecosystem with a digital product. We need people involved. And so that's where we've strongly tried to pull in advisors and, and collaboration and show. And so our teachings, our guides within the software, we have an education section and within the software, we show sort of this process guide that shows exactly each stage of the buy process and where you involve those advisors um, in, and, and engage them in the conversation so that you follow, you follow the rest of the process to actually close on a transaction. Like business brokers have been telling us that only 95, 95% of buyers that they interact with do not buy. So they're only focused on 5%. We thought with this 95%, you know, why are they not buying? Why are deals falling apart? Why are they not making, being able to make acquisitions? And it's because they don't understand the process. There's not enough support. They don't know. They don't know when, who to access for support, and when to access them. And on the other side, the businesses that are that they're engaging with, a lot of the time, they're not prepared, and they're not prepared, so they're not moving through financing, and they're not getting, they're not moving through sort of the channels and the phases because both sides are actually less prepared than they should be. So, 
we're sort of building in this this education curriculum that we will feed out to advisors through, through communities across Canada to make sure that everybody is sort of reading from the same playbook. And, and I love that that concept because if you think about it, you know, and and I, I know a lot of brokers, uh, they just assume that everybody knows what's going on, but mm -hmm. the reality is you know, most people successfully exit a business once, you know, and, and I recognize there's a different time now, timeline now where millennials will start a business. And then, you know, once they accomplish their goal, they'll move on. But, mm -hmm. you know, historically, the vast majority of baby boomers, they've built something their entire career. So most people sell once. And I, I would guess most people you know, I, I know there's professionals who buy and sell businesses all the time, but the average person on the street probably just does that purchase once in their career. Is that a fair assessment or am I off base? Um, it's, it, it is. And I think there's some changing, there's some changing tides that are happening because if you think about who's buying, you know, you've got millennials that are buying now. And I think you're you're accurate to say that the baby boomers typically would start a business and then and then hold it for 20 to 30 years. And now buyers, I don't think we'll see the same holding pattern in a buyer. I think like a lot of our buyers are between the ages of 35 and 50 and they're buying for an investment because they know if I bought this, I know I'm going to sell it. So they're buying with the intention of growing to sell again. And I think that they'll be more conscious of you know, I'm going to sell when the time is right, when I'm personally ready, business ready and market ready. And they're not necessarily just waiting until they're personally ready, which is the trend that we see in the baby boomers is that they're waiting until they are personally ready to leave the business. But there's the other two components to pay attention to is the business readiness and the market readiness. So I think we'll see more uh, trends of serial entrepreneurship in the buyers than we've seen in the past. Well, and that's a fascinating shift. And, you know, you mentioned the 40s, and I'm going to forget all of them, but two, I think, had um, death, divorce. What I'd like to point out is most people don't plan those ahead. You know, usually mm -hmm. it, it's a, a sudden event that happens. So if you're running a business and you don't have a plan and, you know, one of those four things happens, surprise, you, you know, your fire sale, you're hoping for something. Um, I, I love that the next generation of investor is looking more strategically at it. Um, so what advice would you give to somebody who's hoping to avoid the four Ds um, and using that as their exit strategy? I just won't die. I won't get divorced. I won't. What do you think of that as a strategy? You can be honest with me, Liz. Yeah, sorry there, Jeff. You were just cutting out a little bit. Can you repeat oh. the question? My question was, uh, if somebody's plan for exit is they're just not going to die or get divorced or, or mm -hmm. you know, they're just going to avoid the four Ds. Um, what's your advice to those people? <laughs> get the education. You've got to understand the process and you can't just rely on your advisors to tell you what the process is when the time is right. Like we have a lot of accountants that go, I always talk to my clients about their exit, but what does that actually mean? So are we, are we looking at, you know, what do they want? to what do they want for the return on on the business do they have a magic number what is the actual timeline and if it's five years then what does that actually mean because we hear that all the time oh i think i'm going to exit in five years well if there's a transition period at the end of that five-year window then there's like one to two years on the end going to market takes approximately a year that's three so actually if you say five years you're actually two years away from actually going to market so understanding what has to happen in that order so if you're two years away you're you're almost at the on the, on the brinks of, of your tax planning timeline to, to qualify for capital gains and do the proper tax planning, you've got to start now. So uh, I'm, I'm a certified exit planner. And so that's the biggest message that we can send is, is get educated. Um, but I'm just going to send a plug out here, but we, we do, we do exit planning curriculum. We have a, a four part workshop series that helps people write their exit plan that they can use with their other advisors and we kind of do that education piece so um but even even just seeing the map and the diagram of what happens toward an exit will will set people it just it makes you start to think a different way and it it is a mindset shift because all these years you were trying to grow and sustain and feed your family with your business and now you have to pivot and say how is an acquirer going to perceive the value of my business 
And there are different ways that different acquirers look at businesses. So even before that, you have to say, who are my potential acquirers? Who am I trying to attract at the end of the day? And how do I need to position my business to attract those types of buyers? And there's lots of different types of buyers that are coming out too. Like, Social acquisition is a whole new category of buyers that's coming out of the woodwork. Nonprofits are buying businesses, municipalities, opportunity investment co-ops are getting formed with local investors that are coming together to acquire businesses. There's a lot more options out there that, that were ever known before. So it's really interesting and fascinating to start to find out what all of those options are and make a plan. I love it. And I think that's the key. There's more options than ever now. Um, People need to be proactive. They need to, you know, and as a recovering accountant myself, I hated the conversation where somebody would come in and, you know, they've just had a major, like you said, it was the four D's, but it was almost always death, disability or divorce. And they'd sit down across from me and say, okay, this happened. What do we do with the business? And that's a horrible conversation for them to hear I hated having it. So uh, on behalf of accountants everywhere, thank you for being proactive. Um, and I would encourage all of our listeners, I generally will say this with a blanket statement, I don't care where you're at in your entrepreneurial journey. Um, I One of the things I do with my startups is we have an exit plan on day one. Wow, and that's amazing. Doesn't mean we're going to exit. It just means mm -hmm. that we know. And, and by the way, one of my favorites, I sat down with two 20 something entrepreneurs and they're both really excited about their business and the money they were going to make. And the first meeting, one of them said, well, I'm just in it until we reach X dollars in sales. Then I want to sell and I want to go, go back to school. And the other one's like, wait a minute, this is our dream. We're going to live our life together. We're going to grow old together in the business. And it was just funny to see the awkwardness of, oops, how did this not come up before? Um, so kind of like the conversation advice. of getting married and are we going to have kids or not? Like, yeah. this is one of the conversations you've got to have, especially with partners involved. Yeah. Uh, it's like anytime you're in business with someone else, and by the way, even if you're in business by yourself, I always ask, what's the plan? And I know people want to talk about the future and where their business is going to go but to me you at least need to know you know are you going to run this until you're old and gray and you wind it down mm -hmm. or are you going to run it for five years and then move on to a different chapter so to me it's mm -hmm. huge that you have that plan yeah and i think even if you don't intend to sell and that's maybe that's not the vision and i've talked to business owners that go like i'm going to die in my business like I do not want to have this conversation, but they've still come to our curriculum because they know, you know, they're extremely passionate about their companies and the work that they do, but they know at one point they will not be able to be the owner operator anymore. And it's a, it's a legacy piece for some of those, those business owners. And they say, you know, I, I have to make sure that my business can continue without me once I'm no longer able to able to do that and so whether it's their employees or whether they just want the freedom to know that if something happens um, that that their business will continue on and and I think that's that's a big piece that should be taught in startups is if this is not a drive to build to sell all the time this is not what it's about it's about long-term sustainability um, outside of the owner because you know that owner that founder creates this vision and this entity and it's like, you know, they're, I, sometimes I, I think in pictures and sometimes I think, you know, the owner is building, you know, they build the heart first, like they build the heart and then the organs and then the skin tissue and that entity that they've created and, 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 and put breath into needs to be able to function independently on its own so that it can walk and breathe and live on its own and not just always have the heartbeat of the owner or it will not survive when the owner steps out. I love that analogy. That's that's very visual. I love it. Um, all right. Now, in the interest of time, I, I don't want to keep you mm -hmm. too long. What's the best piece of business advice you've received personally? And what has it meant to your career having had that advice? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> By the way, this is the hardest question I'll ask. I that promise. is a hard question. 
Um, I think I'm sort of living and breathing it in a way um, to not, not give up. I think business owners are so passionate about you know, their product or their service that they're building. And I, I'm definitely not an exception. I am so passionate about what, what we're doing. And, you know, it's, it hasn't been easy and you've got to, you know, there's those days where you go, what the heck are we doing? Is this even going to work? Um, and, and that perseverance, um, yeah, I mean, you got to push through the hard days, I think. Um, and we've had, I think the best advice that I've gotten is not necessarily, um, word for word advice, but we, there's some really, really instrumental people in my life who have believed in me and it's not necessarily what they've said, but how they've made me feel that I am supported and that they really believe in you. And I think on those hard days, you have to rely on those people again and go, you know what, they see something in me and they believe in me and I can believe in me too. I love it. And by the way, I think something that's fascinating, um, a lot of people talk about why people go into business. Um, when I talk to entrepreneurs that have been there and, and been around for a while, perseverance is probably the biggest, most common word I hear. So um, I'm glad it's not a surprise. Now, given that we have entrepreneurs who are listening and some are maybe starting out their journey, some are maybe a little further along, what are a couple of action steps or pieces of advice you'd give them to do now based on what we've talked about already? Um, I think for, for new entrepreneurs, I would say from the beginning, you wanna sort of start that roadmap that you're not doing everything. And it's the sort of, I think it was Michael Gerber work on the business and not in the business. And when you're a startup, it can feel very all consuming that I have so much to do and I'm the only one that can do it. And, um, and it's not the case. And there are like so many technology solutions and people solutions today that never existed before. I mean, when I started, this is my third company and, and in my second company, which I still have, like within the first few months that I had the company, I had a VA because I'm like, there are things that I'm not good at. There are things that I don't like doing and they're just going to drag me down. And what is the most affordable option that I can find? And I, I looked at my budget and I had like $400 a month and I went, what can I get with this budget? And I got a VA and we put her on a budget and she was so instrumental in helping me kind of move along. And she's, she's still with me and we've actually built out her services to better serve our clients in a number of different ways. So I would say, you know, be very careful about not doing everything, even if you're on a budget, as you kind of move through the process, as much as possible, you've got to delegate those things to other people, even when you're small and growing. And honestly, I, I know you specifically gave that advice for startups. Um, I, I would echo that for seasoned entrepreneurs because we, we tend to have that, you know, we're the first one in, last one out. Um, think about the little things that you don't need to do that someone else can do. So um, I, I'm really excited to be your first interview after launching. Um, where Thank can you, people Jeff. go? to learn more about Village Wealth or to learn more about Liz McRae and how you're changing the world of business? Wow, that sounds very fancy when you say it like that. Um, Village Wealth is open, um, www.villagewealth.com. And I know you're gonna put that in the show notes because there's a unique spelling to it. And reach out to me on LinkedIn. It's Elizabeth, uh, I think it says Elizabeth McRae, not Liz McRae and McRae is M-A-C. And I'm more than happy, we do demos every week for people. We have a speaker series for business acquisition starting in 2021. Um, more than happy to have to set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with people and, um, and see if there's opportunity to collaborate. We're very collaborative. Awesome. And I'll make sure I get links to the speaker series from you so we can update the post. Um, so thank you very much, Liz. Are there any parting thoughts or comments that you'd like to share with with our viewers before we wrap up for the day? Um, no, we, we really, um, we invite you to participate in the site, try it out. If you're a buyer, if you're an advisor, try it out, see how it works to make a profile. We're very nimble. We, we need your 
feedback to make the product better. It is going to be continuously evolving and that's how it gets better is for us to receive customer feedback. So if there's something that's not functioning, we want to know about it. Please, please don't just go, oh, this isn't working and um, you know, tell us so that we can make it better. And we really want are designing this product for advisors and business advisors to use with their clients. A lot of buyers and sellers will not use this tool on their own. They will need support in using it. So if you're an accountant and you've got someone looking to buy a business, how do you use the tool with them? Same thing as a business coach. If you've got business owners that are looking to sell, how do you use it with them? That's kind of what we're trying to push the envelope with next. I love it. Well, thank you very much for taking time out of your launch day of all days. So thank you, Liz. And I wish you all the best with your launch. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on, Jeff, and being able to tell our story.